Well, Manchester United versus Arsenal is the game of football. With three games to go, Arsenal leads those three games that Man United is set to play as the host Arsenal at Old Trafford, Newcastle at Old Trafford, and sum up our Premier League season away at the Amnext Stadium or the Falmer Stadium in Brighton. Welcome to the United Matters channel. How are you guys? I know you're watching us from the game of football. is going to be played at Old Trafford. And we're here to break it down a little bit for you and see how things are really going to pan out at the side of Old Trafford. Coming in through this game of football with injuries, you know, and some injury boosts ahead of this game of football. Ten Hag is going to have to speak to the media. I'm going to come up and obviously really record some more videos about what the manager is going to have to say about this guy. So let's see close to 300 likes. Smash this video. Don't forget to subscribe so as not miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. <clears throat> this game comes in through at a juncture where Man United is really having huge problems. And our form has been really bad, you know. Drawing with Burnley at Old Trafford just shows you that even we are not doing enough onto that game and losing away in London against Crystal Palace is one of the hugest disappointments that we'll ever face. But we come into this game of football when Manchester United is having 54 points and we are tied with Chelsea in there. And if United, ha if United wants to go into the UEFA Europa League, I think out of the two remaining games they should win, out of the three they win they, they would win too that's why i'm of a view that we shouldn't risk any play in this game if lisandro martinez is to start i would love to see him start against a side called newcastle and brighton and play in the final of the fa cup you get so i don't want us to risk players because you're playing against arsenal you know let's play against arsenal and when everything is done We'll see ourselves in the proper position in there for you. But I don't find myself in a better position to obviously put up um, a better argument of not really fielding these players because it depends on to what the manager really wants. You get? So, Anton Martial. Um, Maguire, <coughs> Veran, Linderov, Kambwala, all those are out. Luke Shaw, Tarell Malasia. All those are out. <clears throat> Seven players out of action. Now, when we go to those that are really doubtful, Mount had a knock, but he's going to be assessed tomorrow after the training. Bruno Fernandes has completed the training session today, and it will depend on how he'll be feeling and how he'll look tomorrow in training, on whether he'll be part of the team that will play against Arsenal. Then Marcus Rashford has gone ahead to return and trained very well. So it depend on to the manager on whether he wants him in or out. Then Lisandro Martinez is another one who has been training for the past two weeks. And it will depend on whether the manager feels like he wants to obviously put him into the mix to really feature for the club of Manchester United. That is it. So we wait and see how things are really going to pan out at the side of Man United. <clears throat> and then get you the best of the best that is really happening down there so at the side of Arsenal, they only had an injury or a knock of tomiyasu but it looks like he's gonna be readily available meaning that Arsenal really having a fully fit squad that is gonna be facing the club of Manchester united so obviously if you've been a fan of Arsenal and been watching Arsenal this season they combine ball possession and speed you get they move their ball very fast they can hit you on the counter and they defend very well no team in the premier league has gone ahead to keep more clean sheets than the club of arsenal because they have 17 clean sheets this season and david raya their goalkeeper has gone ahead to win the golden glove because of keeping the clean sheets and he's having 15. with two games to go if he keeps a clean sheet at man united and keeps a clean sheet at emirates when they're playing everton he would have gone ahead to equal the number of clean sheets that David De Gea made last season to win the Golden Glove. So, <clears throat> he's really huge and Arsenal is not a team that really concedes goals like that. Now, let's get into the predicted starting eleven of Man United as we take on the side of Arsenal. The system, 4-2-3-1. That is it. That's the system that Eric Ten Hag is going to deploy and their constants we know into this united 11 that will never change when they're really available especially when they're not injured now in goal andrew nana no doubt about that he's andrew nana 
very very erratic and you saw the two goals we considered when you're playing against um crystal palace you know the penalty we consider against Burnley, he's the same man. The first goal we consider against Sheffield, he's erratic. So, in the previous games, he has been really very bad. And when you get into the game of Arsenal, with him looking in that form, you really ask yourself, is he going to really show up to the occasion? That is the huge question that really keeps uh, echoing into my mind and ears. So, but he comes in through. When he has a very good day, he'll have a good day. But... We wait and see how he's really gonna show up in there for you right back i think it's gonna be <coughs> diego dalo to play onto the right back of the club of arsenal sort of man united in there for you to me he has been one of the best right backs in in the premier league and he deserves a nod and the reason as to why i play him into that side is because he gets he offers you a lot when he's being playing that side that bisaka doesn't offer so it's better you place bisaka onto the left you know, onto the left back, such that you have Dalo play as a right back. When he plays as a right back, he really creates lots of moments that help us into the huge side of transition. And you know how we transit to that side as we, the people who support the club of Man United. And he is really good. He can really put in an assist and obviously overlap very, very well as a player into that ill so that's why we really need him around as the right back because for bisaka even if you play him as a right back he doesn't really go forward to bring you those crosses so you better utilize the resources of dalo to the fullest by keeping him on the right back and then bisaka to be played onto the left back then the central defense i think as miro is going to maintain his position in there as a right-sided center back and Evans as a left-sided center back. That's what we think things are really going to be looking up like into the elk that we're really talking about. And that is the man himself who goes by the names of Casemiro. They played together for the very first time against Crystal Palace and John Evans was really unfit. But we're here to wait and see how things are really going to pan out into the mix. But all in all, we're here to obviously tell you that they shouldn't really be <clears throat> playing a high line because when you play a high line and really having slow people you know what really happens so that is the central defense of man united in the central defense midfield i would love to see amrabat starting into the mix i would love to see amrabat playing a very huge part into that side because i understand what it means when you're really having amrabat into the mix Amrabat to me should be to that game of football and I don't know why Eric Ten Hag thinks of starting Ericsson ahead of Amrabat in the double pivot you know I think it should be Amrabat and Kobe Mainu into that double pivot to obviously face that midfield of us and that is really strong but if Scott McTomin is back as I've gonna hit to see the manager hint on it we are most likely to see him we are most likely to see Kobe Mainu and Scott McTominay, but I don't think that the manager will risk Scott McTominay because if at all he failed to risk him against Crystal Palace, I see no need to risk him in here. I think it's better you have Scott McTominay, <coughs> Lisandro Martinez on the bench, such that you just get them in and play, and they play some 30 minutes and you prepare them for the remaining three games of the season because they're very much important and pivotal. So I'll go for Amrabat and Kobe Mainu into the double pivot with Bruno Fernandez playing ahead of them. With Bruno Fernandes playing ahead of them, as it's confirmed that he has gone ahead to his return back in training, and maybe the hand has gone ahead to heal a little bit. Right, attacking midfield, I go with Alejandro Ganacho. That is it. I go with Alejandro Ganacho because I know how good he is and how far he can really become and take this side on. Anthony, I think, has been a joke in the previous games, so you get Anthony. And then I know, however much I wouldn't like him to start, but He's going to start Marcus Rashford because he is back in training and he's looking good according to what the manager told us in the recently concluded presser about this beautiful game of football. So, you anticipate that um, you anticipate that um, Ganacho is going to be playing with the right and Rashford onto the left and who is going to be leading the line? It's Rasmus Hoyland, the Norwegian who is just two goals away from hitting 10 goals this season now 
let's obviously start up with the right back and who he's gonna face when you look at the right back of man united he's gonna be facing um he's gonna be facing uh i tell you trossard to me he's gonna be facing trossard not martinelli but i think he can handle anyone we've gonna hate to see him handling the likes of martinelli um and very many others so for me he's really gonna not have a very hard day for me because Trossard is not all that fast, but he's just a press resistant player and invites how much into the midfield. So, um, we have Aaron Wan Bissaka on the left. He's going to be facing Bokayo Saka. I think 1v1s, he's really good, but Saka has some moments he really creates in there for you. So, you cannot rule out Saka when it comes to this moment, but you really look through and really understand that so, uh, that Bisaka is going to be having a very busy day. Central defense, uh, Evans and uh, uh, Casemiro. I think they can match the pace of Kai Havertz, but it will depend on the volumes of crosses and balls that will be put into the United central defense. You get? Casemiro needs to be really very much game reading because in two of the goals we concede in the games against Crystal Palace, he was really the reason as to why he went ahead to concede them. That is it. So the midfield, Bruno Fernandez, Kobe Mainu, and Amrabat for me will obviously have to force Declan Rice, Pate, and Odegaard. And in that midfield, anyone can hurt you. Pate can, Declan Rice can, and Odegaard can. So they'll need to have a better plan from the manager on how to really mark out all those three players and really freeze them into that midfield then ganacho will be facing tomiyasu i think he can't really give him a game though tomiyasu is also had he had not to crack so those are the battles that are going to really enjoy marcus rashford is going to be facing a uh, benjamin white i don't know whether marcus rashford is really in fine form when he's in fine form i know he can beat anyone but this season has been really a tragedy for him I've gonna hate to be vexed every time I've gonna hate to see him do his job in there for you because he has incompetently done his job. If you are to tell you the truth, that is Marcus Rashford for you. Then uh Rosmos Hoyland facing Saliba and the man himself, Gabriel Magales. I know he's really good, but it will depend on the service. This side of Man United has a tendency of really not serving well balls to our number nine and he's one of the least fed you know in the premier league so we need to verify that i think if at all he's played in on multiple occasions he can really torment the side of he can really torment the side of arsenal in there for you so that is how i'm gonna hate to break it down for you in here onto the rokani media football and let's go to what we call the match stats Man United have lost just one of their last 16 league home games against Arsenal. 10 wins, 5 draws, going down one hill in November 2020. COVID time, you remember that. Oliguna Sosha was here, Paul Pogba caused the penalty. Secondly, Arsenal are looking to compete to complete the league double over Man United for the first time since 2006-2007, while they last won 3 in a row against the Red Devils between 1997-1997. November and September 1998. That's what you're getting in through. So, the last one, the last one, a double against us, 2006-2007. Thirdly, having failed to score in 12 of their first 22 Premier League away games against Man United, Arsenal have found the net in each of their last nine visits at Old Trafford. So, they usually score when they come to Old Trafford. Man United have lost at home. To London sides, Crystal Palace and Fulham in the league already this season, only twice before have they lost to three sides from the capital in a single Premier League campaign with both instances, fearing defeat to Arsenal 2001, 2002, and 2002, 2020, 2021. So, Man United have not really gone ahead to do that, but this time round, the defeat to Crystal Palace 1-0 and 2-1 defeat for Fulham at Old Trafford might really see united losing three consecutively from london clubs at old trafford lastly arsenal have lost their final away game in three of their previous seasons under Mikel Arteta, with the expected with the exception being 3-1 win at crystal palace 
in 2020-2021. However, the Gunners are unbeaten when facing Man United in the final Premier League away game in there for you. So, that's what we had coming in through from the side of Google and their stats. And we have to come in here and really tell you what we think about the prediction. My prediction is a draw. That's the best unit you can get out of this game. But I don't see us beating Arsenal. But if it's a win, I give Arsenal. Arsenal the favourites to win this game of football. Unless otherwise, you've not been catching up with Man United. Arsenal the favourites to win this game of football. And Man United can best secure a draw when you're playing against this side of Arsenal. So, that's what I had for you in here for you. I call upon for your reactions in the comment section below. But... The query is on the central defense. If Lisandro Martinez would have gone ahead to be physically fit to partner with John Evans in the central defense, then the double pivot of Casemiro and Kobe Mainu, I think, would have gone ahead to have a chance. But with Casemiro playing the central defense, I don't think we have a chance. I don't think we have a chance. It's really one of those moments that um, are really very, very, very un, um, very, very hard to believe. But we have to believe it that. Arsenal is one of the best sides in the league and we've gonna hit to concede very many goals. All I know is that when are playing a game like that of Arsenal, the levels really matter. The level of mentality, the intensity levels, how clinical you are, you get because Arsenal might have a bad day in office. They can they might come in through when they're really having a lot of pressure onto their heads, remember. Man City is most likely to win against Fulham and Arsenal will come into this game of football when they are um, maybe two points behind Man City and pressure might be huge. So, the more the pressure, the more a team obviously comes in through to find themselves in a position of not getting onto where they deserve to be as a side. So, that game is going to be tricky. But all I know, Arsenal is going to register, is not going to lose. For us not to find itself on the losing side at Old Trafford, I'm really going to be astonished if it happens. So, your reactions are welcome in the comment section below about this beautiful fixture. Who do you start? Who don't you start? In here, onto the United Matters channel. So, go into the comment section. Your predictions. Who do you start? Who don't you start? I welcome into the comment section below. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later. First video of the day and more is yet to come onto this channel. Bye-bye.